Hi everyone, my name is Teresa. I'm 22 years old and I'm a master's um, graduate from biomedical science and I'm currently about to go into medical school. Um, so today I'm going to speak about my journey into medicine but less so of that, more, more about um, how to deal with the rejection because like I said I'm 22 and I'm only just going into medical school now. So um, a bit about my journey, um, after my A-levels, so for A-levels I did biology, chemistry and psychology and you know I did okay, I didn't do amazing, I got three B's in my A-levels um, and from there I applied for medicine. So from very early on I always knew I wanted to do medicine so that was always the goal and even influenced the sort of A-levels that I took as well. Um, unfortunately, um, I didn't get into any of the medical schools at that point. So after my A-levels, I got my, my rejection letters, my first set of rejection letters. Um, I, I, I've actually forgotten what unis I even applied for at the time, but I remember the rejection letters and it was all kind of along the line of, you know, other um, people's applications were a lot more strong. Um, your UCAT scores were quite low because that was my first set of um, UCAT exams that I, I had ever done. So the, the scores were quite low anyway. Um, yeah, so that was my first rejection. Um, and from that, I kind of understood that, okay, I didn't really have much support in writing my personal statement or even in terms of doing my UCAT exam. It was very much off my own back. I didn't have people like Dr. Emma, which I do have now, or House of Medics kind of supporting me throughout my application process. So that was the first rejection that I had. Following on from that rejection, um, I think the first thing I did was tell my mom, of course, um, she wasn't happy, like she wasn't, she wasn't disappointed in me, it was more so she was just, she was unhappy that I wasn't able to go in on the first try because she really, she, she really wanted it for me because I wanted it for myself. Um, and yes, yeah, so I told her, um, kind of felt sorry for myself a little bit, like for a couple of days, and then kind of jumped back on the bandwagon and said, okay, what's next? You know, what's the next step for me? What's the next thing for me to do? And what options do I have? So I said, okay, so I didn't get in this year, what else can I do? So instead of medicine, I went into biomedical science. So um, with medicine, you're allowed to apply, so you have five university options. Four of them can be medicine and the fifth one has to be another course. So I chose four different medical schools and a fifth school for biomedical science. I got into that bio, I got into the fifth school um, with an unconditional offer. So because I, because I didn't get into my medical schools, I said, okay, I'll go to that fifth biomedical science school and let it start as like a, a training point or a starting point before I go and apply for medicine later on. So like I said, like medicine was always something that was on my mind. So even though I didn't get in that first time, everything I was doing, like up until the point of my next application was to get in. So it was always in the back of my mind, even though I knew I was doing another course. Um, so I went into um, biomedical science, which I actually ended up really enjoying. I didn't think I would, because the only course I had ever had on my mind was medicine. But I actually really enjoyed my three years of biomedical science. I got to get involved in some research, things like anatomy. My uni was actually based inside a hospital, which was really helpful in getting work experience for um, medicine um, and kind of getting insight into, um, into how a hospital works. So I think before I go any further in my story, I'll go back to that initial rejection. I think one of the best things that I did in that instance was, yes, I had the period of time where I felt sorry for myself, but I was also very strategic about what I did next. So in terms of, um, not just kind of wallowing in my own like self-pity, but also planning, okay, cool, I didn't get in this year, what are the next steps that I should take to get in um, to get in after my undergraduate degree, what would I need? Okay, let me do my research and find out what sort of work experience do um, do medical schools really like? You know, what sort of um, what, what sort of work placements would they really like to see in my personal statement? What was I missing from this year that I can now incorporate into my application after my undergraduate degree? So always 
taking the rejection but using it as a way to improve upon yourself okay why did they reject me they said my UCAT score was low okay that means this year I need to take more time on that aspect of my application okay this school rejected me because maybe my personal statement wasn't as strong okay great this year I'm going to make sure I get some external help maybe someone to proofread it for me etc etc and like I said before uh, my first application into medical school, I had no support from any sort of doctor. I think I had like my chemistry teacher. He he actually helped me, which was nice, but he wasn't he wasn't a medical student or or a doctor or anything like that. So there was only so much he could kind of um, he kind of do to help me. Um, so luckily, as I was going into my biomedical course, I met Dr. Emma, who I'm sure you guys have probably seen before on this page. I met Dr. Emma and from there, we really just formed a, a very strong bond, a strong relationship. And she became one of my closest mentors in terms of um, medical school and my journey into medical school. So I've known her since I was since I was 17. So quite a long time. And from that point, even like I like when we met, I wasn't doing medicine. I wasn't going into medicine. I was doing biomedical science but we both kind of had to sit down and say okay like this is our aim and we're going to work towards it together and that was the main thing that I was missing in my first application so yeah so continuing on with my journey I did my biomedical science I was able to get a lot of work experience during my time um at university I think that's mainly because the unit I went to was based inside a hospital so there was a lot of opportunities for work experience within the uni and volunteering experience within the uni so I was really able to fill up my personal statement with a lot of experience and kind of interest and stuff that I was able to do for example I took part in the summer dissection program where I got to um, dissect an entire human body and actually went back to teach the next year um, to teach the lower the younger students how to do the same thing um, I was able to get work experience in the A&E department, in the paediatrics department. Um, Dr. Emma actually got me my first proper work experience um, with a surgeon at St. George's Hospital. So I got to observe a lot of surgeries, etc. So again, having someone who is... Um, who can act as a mentor and kind of um, help you gain these sort of experiences is very, is very useful. Um, yeah, so after biomedical science, I applied for medicine again, I think during my final year. And for me, in my head, it was like, you're gonna get in this year. Like you've done three years of biomedical science, you have so much experience, like you've worked hard, you know, you've gotten a pretty good grade after, um, after biomedical science. Like, there's no reason for them to reject you. Like, you've done everything. My UCAT score, again, wasn't amazing, but it was, it was above the threshold, like, that most medical schools um, would have their threshold at. So, like, there wasn't anything really stopping me. You know, the first year, my UCAT score was quite low, but this year, it was just above the threshold. And, you know, I did a lot of work experience, and, you know, it was, it was looking good. It was looking promising. So, I applied once again didn't get into any of my unis so that's why i'm thinking okay like what more do they want from me like what else can i do to get into this school like what am i actually doing wrong even like i would speak to dr emma i'd be like dr emma like i don't know, like what else do they want from me like i've done everything i've done my work experience my ucat scores are okay like what else is there for me to do and i think it's very important to to have leaders that can just tell you um what like what is for you is for you so aside from dr m i have another leader another mentor whatever you want to call it i'll just call it mentor um for the purpose of this of this um video i had another mentor and again the same as dr emma every time i would get like my rejection i would go to him and be like sir you know i've got i've been rejected from all of my unis again you know same as before and he would like he wouldn't feel any type of way about it. He, the only thing he would literally say is, okay, like what is for you is for you. When it's meant to happen is when it will happen. You know, don't dwell on it. Let's move forward. What's next? And he's not a doctor or anything like that. But like, I think because of me, like now he knows like all of the like, he's like, okay, so when's clearing? Like, you know, how's your personal statement? Have you gotten work experience? Are you going to have a placement? Like he knows like the whole kind of like lingo now because we talk about it so much. Um, so yeah, so after that second rejection, the main thing I really did was 
tell my mentors, Dr. Emma um, and my other mentor, and just kind of discuss with both of them what my next steps would be. Of course, the first step would always be clearing. Let's see if you can get through clearing. Unfortunately, again with clearing, it's very, un I don't wanna say it's unlikely, but a lot of their spaces would have already been full. So the places they would give out through clearing are those that got like exceptional grades and so on. So I did, I went through clearing. I wasn't able to get a place through clearing. So again, sat down with my mentors and discussed, okay, I haven't gone through clearing. I didn't get a place this year. You know, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna take a gap year? Am I gonna go into further education? I still want to do medicine, so I don't wanna do anything that's gonna kind of take me off that course. And I was advised to do a master's in, not even any, in anything specific, just to do a master's degree. I think their main point was that they didn't want me to be out of education for too long, just so I'd still have like that rhythm of being in education. So I said, okay, cool. So I went through the sort of options for my master's degree and I chose to do a master's of research in biomedical science. And I think the main thing I did that, the main reason why I did that was because in the whole kind of three years of biomedical science, the main thing that I picked up that I was very interested in was the research side of it. So I had a real love of research, like reading about research. I wanted to be able to conduct my own um, research, which the masters allowed me to do. Um, and then even, even through that, it gave, it gave me a lot of like experience that I could use in medicine. So I think the most important thing is if you are rejected and you go on to do another degree or you go on to do a placement or something that isn't connected to medicine exactly, it's always to remember to extract the different things you've learned from that that you can apply to medicine. So for example, in my research degree, a lot of the a lot of the so it was lab research so a lot of the sort of like research in terms of like looking at articles and journals etc um being um how do i say this being objective in, in the things i was reading and not putting my own sort of like opinions and thoughts into them that kind of skill because a lot of the time when people are reading something they will put their own beliefs and opinions etc into what they're reading during, while you're doing research or reading other people's research, you have to be as objective as possible. And that's something that can be extracted from that sort of scenario and used in a clinical scenario as well, at working with patients and your colleagues, etc. So I think the most important thing is to just extract different things from any work experience you do, whether it's completely related to medicine or not, and always apply it to medicine. That's just a little snippet of something that I learned over the years. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did my master's degree and I really enjoyed it. Again, I have such a love for research, being able to do my own lab research. Um, my research was based on malaria. So it was looking at the uh, malaria parasite and um, its chloroquine resistance, trying to figure out um, what determined its chloroquine resistance because it stops the drug chloroquine from working in patients that, with malaria. Um, so that was very interesting for me because I, had, I have a real interest in neglected tropical diseases. So it was the perfect like um, dissertation title for me to study. Um, so after my master's degree, you know, third try to get into medical school. Again, I applied, I did the UCAT for, for the third time did my personal statement for the third time. Again, I had Dr. Emma with me, like kind of guiding me along the way, telling me, okay, look, this would look nice in your personal statement. This wouldn't look nice. Um, or make sure you did this work experience, make sure you add that in, or you, this was done a long time ago, maybe remove that and add this new work experience in. Just things like that. So I applied and again, it was looking promising because my UCAT score wasn't below the threshold. My personal statement was just jam packed with all of this work experience. And you know, said this is you know this is my year. I'm gonna get in. So I applied. I waited to hear back from my unis, and I heard back, and I'd been rejected from all of them again for the third time. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I should like do something else. Like maybe medicine isn't for me because it's been three times, and I've been rejected every single time you know and i'm not doing like how do i explain this i've been rejected three times but each of those times my application has grown stronger yet they're still rejecting me if that makes sense so the first rejection i could kind of understand because my grades weren't amazing and my ucat score wasn't amazing the second rejection okay my ucat score wasn't great again i can understand that but my third one i was like okay like this is 
it's a bit much now like it's my third try like I should be let in by now you know so kind of in the back of my head it was just it was just like okay maybe this isn't for me if I've tried this many times and I still haven't got in maybe this is like the universe telling me maybe you should do something else maybe you should go into research since you enjoy research so much you know so again you kind of get into that feeling of like self-pity like oh you know i've tried so hard i deserve it you know i've done this this and that and still like they wouldn't let me in like even like my leader like he would just be like why aren't they letting you in like you have everything they need and we both kind of be like we'd both be like confused like we don't know like why they wouldn't let me in but again after that you know that short moment of self-pity like oh they didn't let me in again it's it's back to business like what what's next you know i'm not gonna just sit here and feel sorry for myself what's the next step okay the next step is i'm not gonna do a phd let's just take a gap year and use that gap year to kind of to recuperate and make sure your application this year is is perfected so i took a gap year and within that gap year, I was um, working, I was in employment, I was in a very sort of high paced environment, um, something that is quite similar to, to a sort of, um, to a hospital environment, to be honest, I would say. So it wasn't clinical, but it had the same sort of atmosphere. So I think it's, I, it, was an, it, was, um, it was something that I think has kind of really prepared me for medicine as well, being able to work under pressure, et cetera, and things like that. So yeah, throughout this gap year, I've just been working. Again, I did my UK CAT, I wrote my personal, well, I didn't write a new personal statement, I just edited the original one, added um, any recent like work experience that I've done. Um, and again, submitted my application for the fourth time. And this time I did get in. So this time I had my interview and again, with any stage of this process, it's always Dr. Emma. So I'm sure like she's tired of me like blowing up her phone. Like every time I every time I get any sort of news in terms of like medical school, like like Dr. Emma, I have an interview. Dr. Emma, I need help with my personal statement. Like she's just my go-to person for for everything to do with that. So I got my interview. I let her know that like, Dr. Emma, I have my interview. Um, I'm gonna need help like prepping for this. I'm gonna need help like doing like a mock kind of thing. Um, and she connected me with another medical student who I was able to do my mock interview with and that was really helpful. Um, and after that I had my interview and you know, fortunately it was successful and I have been accepted into medical school on my first, my first, my fourth try. Yay! Finally, after, you know, like three rejections, I finally got in. And I think it just takes me back to what my leader would always say. He would just say, what is for you is for you. It's gonna happen when it's meant to happen. The worst thing I could have done was feel sorry for myself and give up or feel sorry for myself and not kind of take time to recuperate and plan my next steps and kind of just jump into something very brash. So I think in terms of dealing with rejection, I was only able to deal with it because I had people guiding me. If I didn't have people like Dr. Emma guiding me, I would not have been able to deal with the rejection at all. If I didn't have someone telling me, okay, that's fine, you didn't get in this year, but this like one two and three is what we're going to do next to make sure you're prepared for the next year so yeah i think that's it <laughs>